Peterson. He's at school. Rindfleisch. Here. Did I get it right? Yes. <laughs> Sagali. Here. Stefan. Here. Van Akron. Here. Vanderweel. Here. And Warner. And Warner. Here. <laughs> Twelve percent. Okay. Now I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of October 18th meeting. Second. Motion was made and second to approve the minutes of October 18th. Any corrections to be made? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Contrary, carried. All right, tonight's presentation will be concerning Walmart. Tonight's presentation will uh, be by Paulette Enders, Steve Sokolowski, Tom Holton, and then uh, Mr. Ryan Swanson of Arc Design. We'll have Paulette Enders get, uh, stand for, and uh, start the proceedings off here. What I wanted to do was give a brief history on what happened when I represented the law in the city. And what I'm going to do is give you a brief summary and then have Steve Sokolowski, their city planner, go over what happened as far as the plan commission and presentation we used for the application. Steve and Clean will talk a little bit about the development agreement. And then if you have any questions, you can ask either Tom Holton or Ryan Swanson, representative for Walmart. Okay, several months ago, city staff met with consultants working for Walmart regarding development of a new Walmart super center on a parcel of land near the southeast corner of Washington Avenue and Taylor Drive. The land use approval process was discussed with Walmart consultants. Because the proper property was properly zoned, the only land use approvals necessary involved a conditional use permit and architectural review. At the same time the land use approval process was discussed, a traffic impact analysis was requested by the city due to the development's anticipated impact on the area. City staff was very clear that the possibility of the city sharing in the cost of any necessary improvements would be unlikely. As the analysis was being completed and reviewed by the Wisconsin Department of Transportation, representatives for Walmart submitted a conditional use application as well as renderings for architectural review. Because city staff felt strongly about the need for public improvements based on the magnitude of the development, a condition relating to entering into a development agreement that would address infrastructure improvements was added. This issue is coming before the Common Council tonight strictly due to the, the public improvements required based on the traffic impact analysis and addressed in the development agreement before you. Good evening. Um, what I'm going to talk about is a little bit about the conditional use process itself, which took place on July 29th of this year. Um, Walmart came in. We had a hearing that was noticed to the public um, as our typical conditional uses for any use throughout the city, um, whether it's Walmart, whether it's a restaurant, whatever conditional use, they always require a public uh, hearing, as did Walmart in this case. Um, as some of the plan commission members were here, as well as some of the staff that was here, it was, uh, it was kind of interesting because there, was, um, uh, there wasn't a lot of people at, at the meeting, um, but it was definitely noticed. Uh, obviously staff, the plan commission, had lots of concerns as far as public improvements, conditions with the Walmart in, just in general. And as part of that, we had actually drafted 23 conditions of approval that Walmart was to meet. I don't know how in depth you would like me to go if you want me to read through each of them. I guess I would ask the committee for uh, direction that way, but um, if you want, I could read through those conditions or just highlight some of the, the um, more important ones. But obviously, the most important one that we felt as a staff was the developer's agreement, which deals with all the public improvements, the traffic, the water, sewer, what have you. And once we got to an agreement with Walmart, the only people who can approve a developer's agreement are you. 
So that's why we're here this evening, is to make sure that we've covered our bases in terms of covering all those traffic impacts, all the water sewer issues, things like that, that need to be addressed. And therefore, the, we feel as a staff that the agreement that has been developed covers the issues that the plan commission had dealt with, as well as the concerns that staff had about the development in general. So I don't know if there's anything specific that you would ask of me or if you'd like me to read those conditions, but um, please let me know. Yes. Concerns of the staff were? Yeah, the concerns of the staff were traffic. Um, uh, and uh, a, lot, a lot of the concerns had to deal with the, the site itself in terms of uh, a lot, lot of times these Walmart super centers and things like that have trailers that just stay in the parking lot. Some of the conditions that we're dealing with that was, you know, you're not going to have any of the trailers just parked out there if they're not, un unless, of course, if they're coming in and they're just getting rid of their stuff and things like that, but you can't store them out there constantly in the parking lot. There was discussion on the RVs. RVs, uh, Walmart has a po uh, policy of allowing RVs to use the parking lots. That was discussed and, and indicated that we shouldn't have that. Um, Many, uh, many of the uses were, again, the aspect of the outdoor storage and things like that, where you see the snow blowers, the garden centers, things like that, um, making sure those things were interior, making sure all areas that were going to be used for storage were paved. Um, if they're not going to be used for storage, that they're landscaped in some type of fashion. Um, Vision, obviously vision is always critical at the ingress, egress points that we're not creating any issues there in terms of signage so that we're creating any traffic hazards. Uh, forklifts and things like that that are going to be used for the building, that those are all kept on the inside. So we are very concerned about the type of storage and things that we're, we're going to run out there. But I think the biggest concern, again, was the aspect of, A, that we wanted a developer's agreement for the public improvements that were going to be required and that no building permit should be issued until that time. So right now, until, this, um, until it was important from the plan commission's perspective that we didn't want to issue a building permit when we didn't have these public improvement aspects all worked out. Now we're to the point where we have the public improvements ready in, in terms of figuring out what needs to be done. Now it takes this agreement to get us to the point where, yes, if we come to the agreement, that, which we believe is a, a good one, that that uh, Walmart would then be able to get their building permit only at such time as the developer's agreement was signed. I don't know if that answers the question or if you have any additional. Yes, yes. Uh, I read the developer agreement, they, they address a lot of things, including taking care of the roads, construction that's needed and all that, and also flood control, that was good to see. One of my concerns is beyond that development agreement, actually is dealing with the existing Walmart store. What are the plans for that store? Uh, are they going to market it? Things like that. So maybe that's a little further on in the discussion here. We can address that if, if you're not prepared for that. Yeah, I'm, actually, I, don't, I would probably actually refer that to Mr. Swanson to see what input he would have from Walmart themselves at this point in time. But as, far, as part of this discussion, we are focused strictly on the public improvements for this and that aspect was not addressed as part of this agreement. Okay. Uh, the question I have is, can Sheboygan County slash Sheboygan support three superstores, being the one at Plymouth, 13 miles away, one on the south side, and one on the north side of Sheboygan? We have no access from the east whatsoever. We only have west, north, and south. Are we able to support those three superstores? Again, I would refer, refer that to Walmart, but I would say the answer from a staff perspective is when an applicant comes in with an application for a use such as a retail use or whatever in a particular area of town, that's what we're going to take a look at is, first of all, is the use permitted or conditionally permitted in the zone that they're talking about? And secondly, what are the impacts of that proposed use? That's what we as a staff take a look at every time we have a conditional use come in. As far as whether or not something can be supported, basically, again, I would let the applicant deal with that. And I think it would come down to how the market drives it and how they feel if they're going to be successful or not. And I guess if I would 
speak for Walmart, and I'm not don't want to do that, but I'm thinking they made the determination that yeah, they could be successful. Okay, another question, and this would probably be a city attorney question. If the council would turn down these highway improvements, could Walmart still be built? Would you like me to give my two cents? I would say what we have here is an agreement that I think, first of all, that the council needs to be aware there are existing issues out there. All right, there's existing issues from the development that's occurred right now, acuity, the business park, things like that. Um, in a way, Walmart has agreed to do some things with us to help with some of those existing besides what they have um, in terms of their impact. So uh, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, right now the plan commission has approved um, the use. So what it would come down to, and, and yeah, I'd have, to, uh, I'd have to work with Steve a little bit on this one, but um, uh, there would be some questions as far as having your body who approves these conditional uses saying yes, and then get to the improvement standpoint and then say no. Yeah, I understand. I read the entire agreement end to end, and they're also willing to uh, add on to the um, um, retention pond, et cetera, et cetera. And yes. needless to say, I mean, it all sounds fine and dandy, but I don't think we're going to support three Walmarts. I'm very honest. Anybody else? Got any questions for Steve? One. Does the city have any any input or authority over how that building is going to remain vacant? Uh, how that's going to be maintained? And I agree with Alderman Warner. What is it that they have in fact? That's a very key business area. That little shopping center. That thing's going to pull a lot of people out of there. It'd be, it'd be a huge negative impact on the existing businesses. He needs to say Walmart is a, is a company that makes an own decision. They, they do their own physical study. I understand all that. I understand free competition. But as a, as a concern for the citizens and the business people, do we have any say so or any, any, any guidance as to maybe how we can help the, the relocation and, and the maintenance of that building so that it continues so it doesn't become an eyesore? So there's no question that our, uh, our staffs are always concerned about issues like that because, yeah, it's going to leave a vacant space in a very highly used retail area. Um, we're going to encourage and support people, and any, any questions that we would field would be, hey, we have something that's open here. I'm, I can't answer for Walmart again, and I'd look forward to hear what their response is to that. But the only thing as far, and, and Paula, if you have anything to add here, is just be the aspect of making people aware of a space of that size that's available. Um, I don't think I can tell you, oh, we can do this, we can do that to, to make someone go in there, but we certainly can make people aware of it and do whatever we can to encourage people to get there. And, and, and that's, I don't know if there's anything really to add to that. I think, and that was one of the first questions that we asked was, what was going to happen to the building that you're going to vacate? Is that going to go dark and underutilized? And what we were told was that, and Ryan could speak to this too, is that typically, you know, they market those buildings. They don't want to see it sit there and they're making some kind of a lease payment to, you know, either they own it or they lease it and they try to turn it over. And like Steve said, we typically do that with any vacant building in the city as we, we try to move them along also for developers because it doesn't help the city to have vacant buildings. Go ahead. Uh, Paul, I mean, we do have some control over what goes in there with the zoning and the, and the conditional use permits and stuff. And then also, guide what goes in that building. that's true. I mean, it, it has to meet the, the proper zoning and also um, <clears throat> they have to meet the building code. And so if the building becomes deteriorated, well, then we have a method to um, make sure that it doesn't. I think it's part of my thing. We can apply that to, to the, the development on the south side of the super center. It just doesn't fit that way to the plan commission or anything. But I'd like to see a plan to market that come along, that building. And, you know, I don't want to see it turned into a blighted area. We already have the Century building sitting over there, which is, uh, 
uh, problematic, but they're paying their taxes, and Walmart would have to maintain the outside of the building according to city standards, and they get letters and everything else. Uh, hopefully they would do that, but there are other businesses in that shopping center that are impacted by them moving out, and I think it's important to the city that they uh, come together with something that would address sure. that. Sure. I mean, right now they're a major anchor. They generate a lot of traffic and a lot of customers for that, that mall area. <coughs> Thank you, Dan. As long as you're standing there again, um, Paul, Paul, you use the phrase city cost unlikely, that there may cost to the city, unlikely. Do we have more positive term than unlikely? That, that was the initial discussion that we had with um, Ryan Swanson and other representatives was that you know, the chances were slim that the city would be stepping forward and paying for these public improvements. And then subsequently, they've stepped up to the table and said they would pay for those costs. Okay, so unlikely means there's still a chance, but can they positively right. say that we won't have to pay for their roads and their, their, the things they need to make a profit, that we won't subsidize that? Yes, that's what's addressed in the, in the development agreement. Okay. The, the unlikely made me feel less. Unlikely was that initial discussion that we were up front with them. Okay, thanks. Steve, have you got me? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> I, I guess I'd start out by saying what uh, came to me was uh, the issue of its condition number 22 in the conditional use permit. It says a developer's agreement for all required public improvements shall be executed prior to the city issuing a building permit. Um, I had discussions with Walmart's uh, outside counsel from Michigan and uh, uh, I think we had a couple of uh, telephone conference calls uh, with uh, Mr. Swanson was included in one that I participated in, I know. Uh, and we started out, the, the basic understanding from the beginning was that uh, we were going to look to Walmart to be responsible for the costs. Uh, and what I was presented with originally was alluded to earlier, uh, there was a traffic study being undertaken. Uh, and. I was then provided with the laundry list of road improvements that needed to be done. And uh, those of you that were at the Public Works Committee saw, and what came in originally to council was the initial version that just, just addressed the road improvements. Uh, and those are, if everyone has copies of the agreement, those are uh, the first part of Exhibit C. Those are the list that uh, I believe the DOT concurred in and everything. There's a it's listed September 29, 2004, scope of offsite improvements. That page, and then the top of the, the next page, is what uh, originally came in and was what uh, was discussed at Public Works Committee. Uh, subsequently, I, I got a phone call from the water utility saying that. Uh, they had reviewed the plans uh, the, from the water utility standpoint and had made some comments back to uh, uh, Walmart's uh, design people and they really hadn't heard back. And so that got me to thinking, well, there are other, other improvements here we're talking about, uh, other city improvements that in looking at the uh, <clears throat> conditional use permit, it talked about all required public improvements that uh, to me was a broader phrase than just roads. So I felt it was important to include everything that we were asking for, all public improvements. And we're, we're just talking about public improvements here, not what Walmart has to do on their site for their facility, parking lots and, and all that. Uh, so I had contact with the, the water utility and engineering and uh, the planning department. And what was added then was the the bottom part of the second page of Exhibit C, the Green Wing Drive road improvements, and the Exhibit D, the other public improvements, includes all the stormwater items, sanitary sewer, and water main. 
And uh, you note at the bottom of Exhibit D, it says all the above to be constructed in accordance with final approved construction and utility plans. Because uh, to my knowledge, those plans aren't all fully complete at this time. But it includes uh, quite an extensive list of public improvements that Walmart has, uh, has agreed to pick up the tab for. The, uh, the gist of the agreement is that uh, they pay for all the improvements. Uh, they are eligible for a, uh, an occupancy permit when they're substantially completed with the improvements, uh, provided that if there are a few minor things still remaining, typically it would be like landscaping if they're you know, ready to open and it's, it's not appropriate time to be putting in the landscaping, that uh, they will provide a letter of credit in the amount of the, uh, the balance of the public improvements to be completed and uh, they'll complete those improvements then within 60 days. And if they don't, we can take that letter of credit and use that to do the improvements to finish them up ourselves. If we come up short on that letter of credit, uh, they agree to reimburse us for whatever additional costs there are if, you know, upon our submittal of a, of a bill within 30 days. So uh, <clears throat> in my view, Walmart has done everything we've asked them to do. I, I, don't, I can't see what more they could do from the standpoint of what they've been asked to do with respect to uh, agreeing to, uh, to pay for the, uh, the public improvements that are required. I think there was a question earlier about the, if we didn't do the road improvements, um, you know, what would happen? I don't think we would, uh, and I don't know that the state would either allow Walmart to open up without those street improvements, the, uh, all the additional things with the, the lanes off of the interstate, the lanes onto the interstate, turning lanes and things like that. Uh, we've got a great opportunity to uh, have a lot of that stuff funded by Walmart. The uh, figure I saw in the paper, I don't know if it's accurate or not, maybe Mr. Swanson can address this, but it's a million and a half dollars worth of improvements. I'm not sure if that includes things besides the roads or if that's uh, included in there, but it's um, in my 17 years of uh, as city attorney, uh, I'm not aware of any other uh, builder or store owner who's gone to this point in their willingness to agree to pay for all these improvements that are basically public. They're not, they're not Walmart improvements. Um, so uh, unless there are specific questions about the agreement or any other questions about uh, anything related to the Walmart project, uh, that's all I've got. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So basically, Steve, if we, if we vote no to this, we're actually saying no to what we're asking. And it's not going to pro prohibit Walmart from building there. And it could still be, they could still ask us to make those improvements and we might have to accommodate at our own expense. Well, certainly in my view, if we, if the council votes no, and they certainly can do that, uh, voting no from, based on what we've asked them to do, uh, I don't see the benefit to doing that. I guess I would raise concern uh, from the city side as to whether we've, dealt with Walmart in good faith. If, if we ask them to do all these things, uh, we give them uh, permission to build the store and condition that they uh, enter into a development agreement with regards to these things, give us everything they want, we want, and then say, no, we're not going to let you build the store. Uh, um, you know, all the, a lot of the issues that Town of Sheboygan is facing are, are driven by things that really aren't an issue here as far as the location of the, the store and the proximity to residential areas and things. Bill? I just wanted to clarify uh, Alderman Sirtis' question. I mean, you said, yeah, they've done everything we've asked them to do, and, but, but if we would vote no, they couldn't build it without our approval. And that was part of like, the second part of the question or something. They couldn't do it if we voted no. So they can't do it, you know. Beyond us, obviously. Well, I think they would have, you know, uh, an issue 
that they could raise a, a legal issue with us as to our dealing with them in good or bad faith if we were to vote no on this. Uh, this we've insisted on this as a condition of the conditional use permit and uh, they've given us what we've asked for uh, to vote no. Uh, that's in, in effect you're circumventing the plan commission's grant of the conditional use permit and that's that's really within the purview of the plan commission. I guess I see your logic but you know staff has done their job with their concerns you know they weren't dishonest they weren't you know plan commission dealt with it on their issue you know plan commission what did they say about Sheridan Park you know what I mean doesn't mean we're, we're obligated to listen to the plan commission I think they've all dealt with it fairly and honestly yes that doesn't mean that the council has that same feeling it may it may not you know I'm not saying one way or the other but I just I don't know that I'm not a lawyer but you know it seems to me there's two different issues there you know if the council says no we don't want them it doesn't mean they didn't come you know do everything they could do in my mind you know I just don't see that you can say it's unfair just because the council right. never voted yeah go ahead with it like, you know like in the police station we all said let's build a police station beforehand and then now we're working on the specifics of it you know what I mean but the, say let's build a Walmart and then go out there and work on specifics of the it. issue here is not whether to build a Walmart or not it's whether the uh, whether to approve the development agreement but if you don't approve the development agreement you don't build a Walmart well yeah Mr. Swanson would you like to oh, I, I, sh I should note too that uh, attorney Jim Conway is here on behalf of Walmart as well and I don't know if he's got any comments uh, along with Mr. Swanson or not. Eric, did you have a question? I just had a comment actually. Uh, in, in a large degree we did have control over what's going in there when we approve that it's going to be commercial property and zoning uh, and once we create commercial property zoning if an applicant meets the guidelines that we set we really can't restrict who it is. Uh, if it's Super Kmart came in and wanted the same thing, would have an open property on the south side of town, um, put a grocery store in there, we would be granting that approval as well as long as they met all the other guidelines. And that, that's something that we have control over in terms of zoning, but once they meet the guidelines, we really can't restrict. Uh, I think you create issues of uh, discrimination if we start restricting certain people and, and not restricting other people by ownership or, or otherwise. Um, that's why we have zoning guidelines. Anybody else that has, has a question from now on, please use your mic. Okay, now, Mr. Swanson. Uh, yeah, I'm, again, I'm Ryan Swanson. Uh, we were the civil engineers and worked with staff uh, early on, as uh, uh, Stephen Paulette mentioned, on the project. Uh, I guess I, if I can answer any questions, uh, I've heard a few pop up here that I can try to answer uh, at this point. Um, I guess one thing I can address up front was the, uh, the old store. Uh, this store does is intended to replace the current store. Um, I can say with some confidence that efforts have been underway to uh, market that. I cannot tell you exactly the status of that, unfortunately. Uh, I, I uh, have some thoughts of that there has been some interest, but I can't tell you exactly. So uh, I can say though that the existing store, how they how they structure their operations, that store. The empty store would be a drain on the new store. So they have a, a, every intent to uh, sell off uh, their uh, empty property, vacant property, as soon as possible. So I guess from that perspective, the intent is extremely clear that uh, they do want to sell it off, and I believe they do own that store currently. It's not a lease situation. Marge? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to know, does um, the, the city, do we have a requirement that they have to have that store bought and leased or anything in a certain amount of time or they can just lay dormant as long as they want to? Once they, if they by chance would move to the south side, they have the right to leave that store dormant as long as they wanted to? Or does, like I said, does the city have a time limit that they have to have that? Uh, Alderman Segali, from a legal standpoint, uh, if they own the store, they can do what they want with it. Um, they've got to pay their taxes, they've got to maintain it so that it uh, is in conformance with our uh, building codes so it couldn't deteriorate and become a nuisance. Uh, but there's, there's nothing 
that we can require that uh, they have to do something with it if they, they choose not to. Uh, as Mr. Swanson said, I'm not aware whether they own the building or, or lease it, but assuming they own it, they do have a big financial incentive to, uh, to, to sell it and get, get uh, somebody else in there. One of my main concerns is that if that star lays dormant, then all those other businesses around there that are run by local people and are owned by local people will start to deteriorate also because there's no activity in there. And well, like you said, Walmart brought a lot of activity. It was good for the senior centers, senior citizens, and the whole bit getting there. Now, is that, if that starts to deteriorate, then what do we have? We don't have anything at Taylor Heights anymore, and that's not, that's not right for the people that are working very hard to keep their businesses up in that area. You've got Piggly Wiggly, you've got Sally's, you've got, a, you've got the battery shop, you have all of these that probably have based a lot of their livelihood on Walmart. Now Walmart's going to pull out on them. Well, that's an economic decision that Walmart makes. They're not pulling out of the town. You know, actually, no. they're, they're adding two new stores uh, because they think this is a good place to do business, obviously. But uh, you've got the Century store that's dark right now. Now, I, it's my understanding that uh, Century's got a long-term lease in there, and they're making lease payments. They don't own the building. Uh, they have to make lease payments, and, and the landlord, as long as they're getting the lease payments, uh, while I'm sure they've had the property on the market, uh, doesn't have a tremendous incentive to sell if they're getting the lease payments from Century. But uh, you've got the same issue in, in that location. But that building stands by itself. There isn't other businesses around that empty building right now. True. Where there is going to be at Walmart, and I'm a firm believer that we support our local businesses who own and operate those businesses. Well, there's only so much control the city has, uh, city council has, on, on uh, the economics and uh, who's in and out of stores. I mean, it happens all the time. People close one place and move to another. Uh, uh, that's the economics of the marketplace, uh, I would, you know, based on what you're saying, uh, that would bode well for someone else going in there because it is a high traffic area. It's got great visibility. It's in the center of uh, the city. Uh, and it should be very positive for uh, future reuse of that building, I would think. But, that but I, you know, I'm, I'm a lawyer. I'm not an economist or, uh, or a business person, so. But that isn't our building to sell or to lease out. It's Walmart's. Right. Go ahead. Do you have anything more to say, Mr. Swanson? Um, I guess unless there's any other questions I can address directly. Bill? Uh, yeah. Um, there's been some confusion in the paper and stuff. How many people is, are going to work at this Walmart Supercenter? I mean, roughly, obviously. This is know. a this is one of the bigger, actually, the biggest uh, store they have, and I think the total number is approximately 400. Okay, and then how many work at the current one now that won't be there anymore? Uh, this is just a guess, but probably 250. It, okay. It's a good I mean, size store there so too. So we're adding 150. I guess for the public out there that's not aware, could you kind of highlight some of the things that the Walmart Supercenter does that the Walmart doesn't? Um, currently, the the biggest thing would probably be the expansion. I, I think the current store does have a good uh, good portion of grocery inside that store, if I recall. But it would definitely be an expansion of that first and foremost. Secondly, they offer uh, have some internal uses that kind of sp uh, bigger spectrum of of uses, including uh, expanded pharmacy, um, limited automotive, tire and battery service, uh, lube changes. Um, so it's, it, basically it just expands on uh, kind of the commercial uses uh, inside it. More of a, a there's a, a much more enhanced uh, garden center, temporary seasonal garden center too. So it really just takes what they've had, what they have at the current store and expands that. I guess the, the logic behind my question is I share the concerns of both, you know, we've heard before, especially having three in such a small area. I mean, nobody gets their car oil changed more because Super Walmart's doing it. Nobody buys more laundry detergent or more meat or, you know, because you have stores there, you might go there and I understand that's economic interest, but nobody does it more. We consume what we consume 
you know, and I'm concerned that who's going to want to go into that? I mean, I, I'm trying to think of a of a retail use that's going to want to go into the old store because they're probably going to be fighting against the Super Walmart, you know, or three of them within 15 miles. And I guess, you know, it just it seems to me it's having one. I probably wouldn't even vote for it truthfully, but having three in that little area to me just seems like you're going to crucify a lot of the businesses in the mall area in that area. I, you know, I just I have a real problem with that. And, and and I want to be clear, I think the staff has done everything we asked of them, you know, Tom and, and Paulette and Steve. I mean, th that's not their issue. You know, they did a fantastic job of getting everything. And I think we have everything we could have asked for as far as improvements. But you look at, alleged, you know, again, what, what I don't know exactly, but what the town is negotiating with, and they've got future land values in there. They've got all these other things. And it seems to me like all of a sudden this one's more important because we want to get this one done. Because maybe, in my mind, I'm thinking maybe the town's going to end up with a better deal than we got because they're talking about, you know, I mean, if, again, I don't know what, that, how serious the Walmart people are negotiating it, but certainly the residents who want it are talking about, you know, what if their future land values go down? What about this? What about this? They've got a whole litany of things, whereas we don't have that many issues, and it might be, I don't know why we benefit in moving first in that issue, okay? I don't know what, you know, it doesn't, it, to me, it just seems like we're devastating that area. And they, we've done everything to fix this area. I 100% agree with that. But what's the value of having an empty, blighted, you know, area over there? I mean, we've had stores at the mall. Half the mall was empty for months. We've had, you know, other areas. The Century, okay. You know, we know there are probably a couple reasons why nobody's been there. But I just think that whole area of town is going to be, you know, especially the fact. I don't think it'd be quite as bad if we, you know, say it does. They don't build in the town. Well, then that's still the north side anchor and some people might not go all the way to you know the super Walmart every time but otherwise you know you're just killing local businesses and I mean and, and don't get me wrong I, you know that that's what Walmart wants to do that's I just don't think that that's I have to vote for it because of that because they've paid for all the you know brick and mortar improvements they have but I don't think you know they haven't shown me that they're going to do anything to the existing businesses other than drive them out and kill them you know we've got a, a base here of you know the fresh brands and Shul Sable has been here forever it's, this is their base they've got Piggly Wiggly stores all over this area, and you know, we're crucifying them if we, if we have three Walmarts in 12 miles. And I guess I, I have a real concern with that. And again, I think staff did everything we can ask them to do as far as you know, taking care of the costs of adding this new one, but I just think there's other costs that aren't figured in the brick and mortar that you know, I won't be supporting this, and I can't, you know, unless there's some type of agreement that in, you know, addresses that. Alderman Bauman. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. The question was not answered. Can Sheboygan County, the city of Sheboygan, and anywhere else support three superstores within this 13-mile radius? We have no access from the east. I asked this before. It wasn't answered. Now you can answer it. Can we support them? Yes. Um, according to Walmart's data, their marketing data, uh, they believe this area can support uh, three stores, and I, I, I say three, assuming the north store would be built, which is an assumption at this point, uh, as well as the, you know, adding the Plymouth store in there. Um, I'm not privy to that marketing information, but I, you know, they've looked at the trade areas where people are coming from, credit card data. They've looked at anticipated growth of the community, and they've decided that for this area, that's what they're proposing at this point. It are the three. One more question, and I know that really it's not your responsibility to answer this, but I will ask it. What type of pay and benefits will these employees get at this store? You don't have to answer it if you feel that you don't need to. I guess I'm not, kind of the same with the marketing. I'm not privy to that. It would be consistent with, uh, I'm assuming consistent with the current store and the policies of that, of that store in general. Alderman Vander, really? Thank you. I mean, we can push Walmart out of the city and make it so there's no Walmart here, and then they'll just go out of the city, and the tax base will go somewhere else, and we'll lose that tax base. I mean, if that's what this council wants, we can do it. But my question is, it's not clear. Is it just going to be a super Walmart, or is it going to be like a strip mall concept? It's strictly for this site. Um, uh, it's just, we're just proposing uh, the super center. There's really not any additional land for uh, like out parcels, like say across the interstate at the Target Home Depot. It's not, it's not that big. 
Um, and frankly, the super center fits on the site quite well, but that's it. Um, every other piece of the property is really taken up with green space, um, parking, things like that. So right now, that's all we're talking about. Uh, to add to that, though, one thing the study did look at was a substantial area of both commercial, future commercial development and in, 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 additional industrial development to the south of the site. So uh, it, you know, I think we've, we've considered that in the traffic study that this area could expand even further than just, just the super center. I, uh, I agree that, that uh, any development we do need to look at uh, social costs uh, with that in terms of uh, employment and uh, union jobs versus non-union jobs. Um, family businesses, can we afford to have more than one super center or not? Um, as I made a comment in the paper that I, you know, no offense to the business by them, but I have friends that work at Fresh Brands and I'll continue to shop at Piggly Wiggly and I won't shop at uh, uh, Walmart because of that. Um, you know, I understand uh, my, do I can vote with my dollar, my business decision to keep going with uh, Piggly Wiggly versus uh, Walmart. Um, but as uh, Alderman Vanderweel has said, uh, they don't have to build in the city of Sheboygan. And we will still will have an empty lot, and we still will have small businesses, family-run businesses up in Taylor Heights that are impacted when they move out. They can go to the town of Wilson if they want. Um, just across the way, they could go on the west side of I-43, closer to the Kohler plant, uh, the Kohler um, development in Deer Trace, and then we do not get those dollars that we currently would get right now uh, from the uh, one, wh whoever does fill in the current existing Walmart store, and two, the new development that we get the new additional tax base. And the third part of that is if even if they build elsewhere outside the city of Sheboygan, the city will still have to pay for all these traffic uh, improvements as well as uh, other improvements with the water and, and, what ha and sewer and what have you. Uh, and without any guarantee that anybody else will make us the same deal that Walmart currently is offering us right now. Uh, any development that's going to go in there, Walmart or otherwise, which will happen because it is zoned commercial, uh, they may not come in and offer us to build additional uh, green wing pond. Um, you know, I think you know we we can analyze the type of business. I urge people to vote with their dollars if they disagree with the type of business it is. But uh, obviously, people currently vote with their dollars to support Walmart by the amount of traffic they're getting up there, um, and you know, hope for their sake in terms of business that will continue. Uh, otherwise, we may end up with something empty. But um, in terms of the, of the decision we have to make today is do we have them pay for the, these improvements? Do we pay for them ourselves? Uh, do we add additional tax, rev, you know, tax base to our, our, our city? Or do we let uh, the towns continue to, to take away our, our ability to expand? Uh, so I will support for this. Um, but uh, like I said, I will continue to support local businesses as well. Thank you, thank, thank you Mr. Chairman. I, I, too, will be supporting the resolution to allow this to go forward. I think, uh, as Silas stated and, and, and Eric stated, it is important that we keep Walmart in the city. We don't know that there's going to be a third Walmart. That's an issue they have to work out. It may or may not happen. It's not a guaranteed thing out in the town. I know the town has its concerns, and they'll have to deal with that as a town. We have to think about the city overall. You know, Walmarts, if they, if they do leave the city completely, we end up with nothing. I do have a concern about Taylor Heights. I want to make sure that building gets marketed, and I hope our staff works on it. But I think uh, putting a super center in the business park is the best place you could put it. The, the, the roads and everything that they're going to be putting in there is going to be a positive for all the businesses down there. Yes, they're going to have an impact on our businesses. We know that. They're a larger store. They have great sales. Uh, all kinds of things that, that make people want to go to Walmart are there. They're going to exist in the super center. Uh, I like those people coming to Sheboygan. I want to see them come to Sheboygan. I want to see them shop on, Sheboy on Sheboygan property, city of Sheboygan property. They're going to spill over into other things. There'll be other developments around there that are positives on the end of Walmart. There's going to be other buildings and restaurants and things that'll go on out there in that area surrounding there that will get positive impacts from Walmart. Yes, Taylor Heights is a concern, uh, and I, will, I want to see that marketed. I have know a lot of people that over there. We go to Taylor Heights a lot, uh, so I have that concern. But for the best interest of the city in the long term, that is the best place for it. Frankly, I hope it doesn't work out in the town of Sheboygan. And it does work out in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, it belongs there. It's almost a, the perfect fit. There's no homes around there that are going to be impacted. 
no residents. It's an uh, industrial area. There's an on and, on and off ramp that will take the major traffic that we would be concerned about if it was put somewhere else in the city right there. Uh, it's, they're not going to be driving all the way down Taylor Drive to get there except for people that live in the city. Most people would take I-43 to get there quicker. Uh, I think all in all it's a win situation for the city. I do still have a concern about Taylor Heights. I'd like to make sure that they market that. We can't tie that to this. It's a different, is different issue. But I think we can work through that with our planning staff and, uh, and hopefully that happens. So I will be supporting it. Alder Person, Modern Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Berg. <clears throat> I pretty much agree with um, Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, I will support it. If I were living in the town and representing the town, there's no way I would support it because so many people feel against it. However, I will support this. I personally won't shop there. I've not spent a dollar in Walmart yet in my life, and I won't, but I will vote for you to build on the south side. Okay. If there's no more questions for Mr. Swanson. I just, just one thing, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say, you know, you have to get to the, if you have a concern about Walmart or Supercenter, shop at some of your local stores more often. Don't just go to Walmart, and I'm saying that to everyone in the public. I go to Trilling Hardware as often as I can. Sometimes I forget to go there. I automatically go somewhere else, Menards or wherever. Uh, but get into tr Trilling Hardware when that flyer comes out or any other time. You can support your local businesses that way, and, and do that as often as you can. So. Alderman Stephan. I guess I just hope we can have the option to go to Trilling Value in 15 and 20 years because I'm concerned. And I guess, you know, I, I agree with a lot of the, what's been said, but I think the major concern of even everybody who's for or against it is, is the fact, you know, there's two new ones and there's one in Plymouth. I mean, if we would wait and find out what happens in the town and it doesn't end up getting built there and they build one in Sheboygan, I think, you know, the industry could handle that a lot better, you know. I mean, sure, we can say, well, yeah, it's gonna, otherwise it's going to be in the town of Wilson. Does anybody really think the town of Wilson wants Super Walmart there? The town of Sheboygan doesn't want them. The town of Wilson's even more rural than the town of Sheboygan is. You know, so you can say that, and it's kind of like a nice way of putting it off, saying we've got to have it, but I just don't think in the long run it's a benefit to our people, and I won't be supporting it. Alderman Warner. Since we can pretty much talk as much as we want, <laughs> I guess because we're having a discussion, I guess, you know, I look back when I was a kid, it was Bensman's Market. There was Gross's Market on uh, Geely Avenue on 8th Street. Bensman's on Michigan Avenue. There was one on 20th and, and Seaman Avenue. Bensman's Supermarket. All the little supermarkets. And along came Park and Shop and Piggly Wiggly, and they built their little bit bigger supermarket stores. You know, I came back from California uh, in 73 and, and saw some of the changes, and we started shopping at Park and Shop Northgate. And, that, and eventually that turned into... Uh, Park and Save on uh, Kohler Memorial Drive. And all through all those things, all these supermarkets put out all the little mom and pop stores out of business basically because people could get everything they wanted there. They had lower prices and, and that changed everything. Now the bigger stores are coming in and they're kind of having an impact on our smaller grocery stores. And you see Park and Shop is no longer there. It became uh, Park and Save and, and the rent sold it and became uh, Roundy's Pick and Save now. And that's just a natural progression. But what you do see, is you see all the little oriental grocery stores popping up, the little uh, uh, Mexican uh, grocery stores and things popping up, specialty stores, and they're making a good business out of those. And I think there's a cyclical thing here that's going to go around and around again. But at this time, I think this probably is in the best interest of the city. So. And for myself, I would say, uh I will definitely support this resolution tonight because we shouldn't worry about what's going on in the town of Sheboygan right now with the Walmart. Worry about Sheboygan. This is what we have to think about, Sheboygan. She town of Sheboygan will take care of themselves. Okay. You had a question yet? Just a, a, a final question to the, the real question at hand today, or final comment to the real question. Question is, do we accept the, the the development plan, which is for Walmart to pay for all the improvements down there. Uh, once again, those improvements are going to have to be made. 
And if you vote against this, I hope you have a good explanation to your taxpayers of why you're going to ask them to pay for that instead of having a completely private enterprise donate that money to us. Okay, they're seeing no more lights. I will entertain a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Just Attorney Conway. Very quickly. Um, <clears throat> my name is Jim Conway. Walmart got a hold of me last week. Uh, they asked if I could just be here this evening so that they would know exactly what's going on from an attorney's perspective. Uh, I assured them that this was not going to be an adversarial matter. I assured them that this was not a hearing about whether or not there should be a Walmart uh, because the permit's already been issued and it's just a matter of implementing the development agreement. And your city attorney just told you that. This is not a hearing about whether or not there should be a Walmart. This is not a hearing about whether or not Walmart can close their existing store. This is a hearing about whether or not Walmart is prepared to meet the development agreement. Uh, your city attorney, I probably didn't need to be here tonight because he's explained this to you better than I can. And he stood here and told you this is the best deal he's seen, I think, Steve, you said in 27 years. 17. 17 years? <laughs> I'm not trying to age you any more than that. 17 years. I better change my notes. Sorry about that. But uh, 17 years of experience with the city best deal he's seen. So Walmart people have done everything that's been asked of them. They've worked with your, uh, your engineering office, with your development office. Uh, they've acted in complete good faith. And they're ready to carry out their part of the bargain. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> OK, now I'll entertain a motion on resolution 121-0405. Alderman. Alderman Werner. I'd move for passage. Motion was made and seconded on resolution 121. Any questions? Oh, Steve. Just uh, to make clear, for uh, to clarify, I would suggest that the resolution, you know, before you act on it, be uh, amended in two places to strike out roadway. It's in the uh, caption and also in the be it resolved. Uh, currently, it talks about concerning certain required public roadway improvements. So I, I would suggest uh, amending it to delete the reference to roadway. Second. Okay. Then we will take a vote on resolution 21 as amended. Pardon? Have to go ahead and amend it. Okay. All in favor? Must you take a roll on that? Okay. We'll take a roll call vote on the amendment. The amendment, <clears throat> the amendment is to strike out the word roadway in the two different parts of the resolution, so it just says public improvements. Okay. Um, Bauman? No. Kerr? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Sigali? No. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Eleven ayes, two noes. That's on the amendment. Okay. The amendment's out of the way. Now we will go to res resolution 121-0405. As, As amended. Uh, Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Segali? No. Stefan? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. And Bauman? No. Uh, ten ayes and three noes. Ten three. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion seconded. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned.